When you run the internet, whenever you use a web-based interface that provides any kind of feedback for the user, there's a database involved. This means that whenever you enter a username and password for a website, upload a picture to Facebook, enter a reply on a blog, or even enter search criteria into a text box, you're interacting with a database at the back end which processes your data. Databases store all manner of information, from user login credentials, multimedia, to financial information. SQL injection is a web-based attack where an attacker tries to exploit vulnerabilities that exist in the user interface or SQL coding architecture of a website in order to obtain unauthorized access to data stored in a back-end database which services a website. The following presentation will demonstrate the use of one of the more popular SQL injection tools known as SQL Map. In the following section, I'll go over a few of the basics of what SQL injection is, then I'll dump data from a dummy web application hosted on Kali Linux. Let's begin. SQL injection made its first appearance into public discussion around the year 1998. In 2013, the Open Web Application Security Project, or OWASP, listed it as their number one threat to security. New types of attacks often have a relatively brief shelf life before they're considered a lesser threat. However, SQL injection has managed to stay relevant for more than 15 years. Two of the most popular targets for attackers using SQL injection are web applications that are created in PHP and Microsoft Active Server Pages, or ASP. Most of the examples that you'll find on the web concerning this topic use those two technologies as their targets. This has become the case due to their use of legacy code and older functioning interfaces. If you'll remember from July of 2015, the adult website Ashley Madison was the victim of a data breach. The website had its database dumped and made available in the darknet for download. A number of prominent names were made public as a result. However, it was also made known that possession of the database dump was also considered possession of stolen property. It is still not yet clear exactly how the attackers were able to acquire access to the back-end database. However, it is very likely it was a result of a SQL injection attack. For this demonstration, I'll be using SQL Map to conduct the SQL injection attack. For the victim, I'll be using a prefabricated dummy website called Damn Vulnerable Web Application that was specifically designed to be used for simulating web-based attacks. There's a benefit and a problem with using this particular demonstration model for SQL injection. The benefit is that you're in a sandboxed private environment where you'll not be breaking any laws. The problem on a lesser scale is that this does not accurately depict the dynamics of a SQL injection attack. The steps involved in exploiting the target in this simulated environment are very simplistic and don't reflect all of the additional variables that one will encounter when attempting to breach a web-based database. Needless to say, as a pen tester, this is probably not something that you'd come across in real life during a job. Like many other forms of exploitation, SQL injection done out in the wild often requires a lot of trial and error as well as cross-referencing and research before you successfully breach your target. The real benefit of this demonstration is to show you how an attack such as this will look when it's executed. Whatever you do, do not practice on public internet-facing websites for casual fun. First, I have to bring up the ZAMP web server. I had to install this onto Kali Linux. It allows us to host our demo target. Specifically, the damn vulnerable web application will run using a combination of Apache web server and a MySQL database server. The data that we'll be stealing in our fictitious scenario will be a user's table stored in one of the MySQL databases. Next, I'll bring up the damn vulnerable web application. You'll notice that we're allowed to adjust the security level of the application for training purposes. 
For this demonstration, the security level has been set to low. This will allow us to do our dirty work. Next, we'll navigate to Blind SQL Injection. This page was specifically designed to train penetration testers in the basics of SQL injection using pre-programmed vulnerabilities. We will only be using it as an access point of sorts, allowing us to use the SQL map tool to get the information that we need. I will now go to the Tools option on the browser's menu bar and select Tamper Data. Tamper Data is a Firefox add-on tool that serves as a proxy. When I say proxy in this case, I'm not referring to the application that allows you to remain hidden while on the web. A proxy in this case is a tool which sits between a browser and a web server. Its job is to capture traffic going back and forth. With a proxy, you can capture clear text data, HTTP get and post packets, as well as session cookies. We'll be using the Tamper Data Proxy application to capture HTTP data that will be entered into SQL Map, which will in turn be used to exploit the backend database. I will now enter some data into the User ID field. This is just a bogus field with a submit button that we'll be using in order to generate some backend traffic. Now I'll bring up the Tamper Data GUI again. As you can see, we've generated some traffic from the server. For this captured data, we'll be using two pieces of information to start our injection. These will be the web page URL and the session cookie. The session cookie is a file which contains information about the user session. It's used for authentication. If the information in the session cookie is incorrect, the user will be redirected to an alternate page. We'll be using the session cookie as part of the injection attack so we can maintain a valid, meaning authenticated, session so we can get to the database information. Next, I'll open SQL Map. At the prompt, enter the SQL map command, followed by a dash lowercase u. Add a space, then copy the URL information from one of the captured packets from the tamp tamper data proxy application. After the URL has been added, add a space and then a dash dash cookie equals, followed by the cookie session information. After all this has been added, check your syntax for any possible mistakes. If everything looks good, then hit enter.
After SQL map has processed our commands, we see that the ID field is vulnerable to injection. This is what we want because it means that we can get the user login information. We will now run the same commands that we ran previously, only we'll add a dash dash dbs at the end. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now we have all of the available databases that are at the back end. Next, we want to select our desired database and see what tables are inside. To accomplish this, we'll run the sequence of commands that we just ran, only we'll remove the dash dash dbs and we'll replace it with a dash capital uppercase d space dvwa for the desired database name and space dash dash tables. Then we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now we see that our desired database has two tables inside of it. These are guestbook and users. Next we want to see what's inside of the users table. To do this we bring back our initial set of commands and at the end we add dash capital T space users space dash dash column. Then we'll go ahead and hit enter. After running the command we have all of the individual field names that are inside of our desired table. What we want now is to get a data dump of all of the users in the database and their passwords. To accomplish this we bring back the last set of commands that we ran and at the end we remove everything from the dash T to the right and we replace it with dash capital C user comma password space dash dash dump. While this set of commands is processed by SQL map you will be presented with some prompts. One of them will ask you if you wish to use a dictionary attack on the password hashes. Go ahead and say yes to the dictionary attack. As you can see, SQL Map has created a small table of the users along with their cracked passwords which are displayed in parentheses to the right of the password hash. SQL Map used its basic dictionary which is included. However, you may include your own dictionary for a more thorough password attack. You are also given the option of saving the username and password dump to another file for further cracking using other third-party tools. Password cracking itself is a topic for another presentation. The Open Web Application Security Project comes out with their three-year refresh of the Web Application Threat List sometime next year. You can be fairly certain that SQL Injection will still be on it and will probably still claim the top spot. Web application-based attacks are what the average person will encounter most on a day-to-day -day basis. If we're talking about what we see most frequently as the average user, that would probably be cross-site scripting or some other form of web page redirect. If we pay attention to the news, one of the many attacks that we hear about as of late will very likely include a SQL injection attack along with other surreptitious methods of stealing administrative credentials. As a society, we are dependent on the internet for almost everything today, from entertainment to research, bill payments, and even SCADA administration. Web-based SCADA software controls almost all of our utility infrastructure. This includes power grids, water treatment, oil refineries, and nuclear facilities. Imagine what someone with a little network savvy, some free tools, and a malicious agenda could do if he was able to get a data dump from a power grid. It's one thing to publish names of people who paid by credit card to use an adult website, 
but it's a completely different concern if someone gets the administrator password for a nuclear plant or a water treatment facility or an oil refinery. This ends the presentation.